Today I'm going to talk about how to make your beats sound more three-dimensional and why it's so important if you want to improve your beats. Depth is one of the most important factors when making a beat that sounds balanced and it's one that's too simplified commonly. Most people might just throw reverb onto a sound and call it a day when they're trying to add depth to make their beat sound more three-dimensional, but this might not lead to the best results. In order to get your beats to sound better, you should be using a number of different tools to create depth. It can be the difference between a great sounding beat and a cluttered, muddy, mediocre one. And in this video, I'm gonna cover five different ways to go about adding depth into your beats in order to improve them. And by the way, if you guys enjoy my videos, please do consider subscribing. It really does help my channel out. And if you get tired of my videos, it's really easy to unsubscribe. Let's start with concept number one, which is frequency reduction. To do this, we will need to use an EQ. Using EQs isn't just a way to help clean up your sounds to get rid of unwanted frequencies or boost frequencies that you do want in your sound. It can also be a tool that you can use in order to help create some depth. Let's start off by looking at the sound here in the beat. Here we have this layer of bells which I EQ'd. Take a listen to how this would sound if I took this EQ off. All of a sudden these bells just sound a lot more in your face and a lot more present in the beat. The depth of the sound has been reduced here. Now I will say I actually like how this beat sounds with these bells being as loud and present as they are here, but this is going to be a problem. The reason why I think this is going to be a problem is if I handed this beat over to an artist, most likely these bells will just start to get in the way with how present they are here. And an artist might have a hard time using this beat because it just sounds like there's a lot happening in a space that may be close to where their vocals might sit. And this is why playing around with depth is such an important concept. It can be used to work sounds into your beat that you want and like, but do so in a balanced way. So if I turn the EQ on, you can hear the difference. So let's take a look at this EQ here and think about why this helped this sound feel like it's a bit further back in the beat now. One of the big ways EQing can help you take a sound and make it feel like it's pushed further back in terms of its depth is by cutting a lot of the higher frequencies like I did here. Now the reason why cutting high frequencies makes it sound like it's a bit further back in terms of its depth is that fundamentally this is how sounds work in nature. To help me explain this, let's take a look at this video here from Sesame Street. Here we have Grover, he's climbed a mountain and he's about to yell the word two. 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 Now we can hear the echo sounded like it's further away, like it has some depth to it. And one of the properties of the sounds that results in it appearing this way is the fact that it doesn't have as much higher frequency presence compared to when Grover originally said the word too. And if I take an EQ here and I test this out. Two. Two. So you can see if we compare the original sound with the echo, what they have in common is that they have somewhat of a similar presence in the lower end. But what's interesting is that as we get higher and higher up in the frequencies, the echo doesn't have as much presence compared to the original sound. And this is exactly the idea that you can implement into your own beats. Cutting the higher frequencies of your sounds can be a great way to help create the perception that the sound is a bit further back in terms of its depth. So that's one way you can add depth. Another way that we can go about doing this, I'm not really gonna go in depth with this one because I suspect it's what we already all know, is using reverbs and delays. This is what most people think about when they wanna create depth in their beats. What a delay will do is take your sound, replicate it and replay it back to you, but delay the amount of time between the original sound and the replication. This is what creates that sort of echo sound. So this is what a delay sounds like. Two. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. So here's an example of delay. Whereas a reverb will do something somewhat similar, but the amount of time it takes for it to replay is very immediate compared to a delay. And this is what creates that tail at the end of your sound if you use a reverb. What it also does is it replicates many different versions of the same sound as well. I am oversimplifying here, but nonetheless, this is how a reverb would sound. And here's the dry signal. 
So using one of these tools or even both can be a great way to take your sound and create a sense of depth. And you can even see in some reverb and delay tools it even gives you an option to do some high frequency cutting. And this speaks to our first point which is that you can create some more depth by reducing the amount of high frequencies in your sound. Next up a very important concept when thinking about depth is the idea of context. In order to get something to sound far away, we need to have a sound that seems closer to us. This is where many producers go wrong. They'll take a reverb and add it to every single element in their beat and what we end up getting is a lot of blurry sounds mushing into each other and not really sounding distinct. This is something that I did with a lot of my older beats and it definitely ruined a lot of good work that I could have done. So with this beat as a whole, if we take a listen, So what I've done here is that I've tried my best to ensure that certain sounds are very up close and immediate and others have a sense of depth to them, they're pushed further back. That way context is created. So here in this beat, the drums are very up close and in your face. Later on in the beat we have this little whistling sound that comes in as well. And you will notice this is also very dry and very up close and immediate sounding. I made sure not to add any depth effects onto the sound. If I did, you can hear what happens if I solo this as well as my bells together. This sound also gets pushed back in the beat and sits in a similar space as the bells do in terms of their depth. And at this point we have one less sound in the beat that is helping us create context which might not be the end of the world by any means. The larger point that I'm trying to make here is that in order to create depth to make something sound far away, we need to have something that sounds closer to us. How you do this and how many sounds you use to do this is up to you and the beat that you're making, but nonetheless, doing this to some degree is gonna be a good idea. Now with this idea in mind, let's talk about how to reduce depth in sound. This is something that is equally as important. For one, if we know that reducing the high end presence is something that makes a sound feel far away, increasing the high end presence can make it sound more up close and immediate. And one way we can achieve this is by using saturators and distorters. If I were to go back into my bell sound for example, let's take off all of these depth effects for now and hear how it sounds raw once again. This sounds pretty in your face, but let's hear how this sounds if I add some bit crushing distortion on top. Now this sounds a bit more in your face. This is a technique that I use whenever I find a sample that has some reverb baked into it and I want it to sound a little bit more present than it already does. For example, these chords here. You can hear how this sounds if I took this bit crushing off of the sound. So again, in order to create some context and have sounds sit in different spaces in terms of their depth, I use some bit crushing here to help move this sound around and bring it a bit closer to us. Another tool that I used in this beat was a transient shaper. This will be a bit more effective on sounds that are a bit more transient in nature, like drums. You can hear, if I were to crank this transient shaper up, This is really taking that natural reverb that was recorded with this drum break and making it far more pronounced. And as a result, it's making it seem like it's further back in the beat. But again, I want the opposite here. I want to reduce how much depth there is with this drum break because I wanted to use this to create some more context and bring it more in your face. So what I did was I reduced the release of this drum break to help minimize that natural reverb on this drum break. And this basically helped me control the depth of this sound and have it appear more upfront. So those are some tools that you can consider when bringing your sounds closer to you. The last two concepts that we will cover here are very simple and straightforward as well. Another method is to layer. With this drum break, again, in the pursuit of trying to bring this more upfront in terms of its depth, I added this additional snare on top.
And you can hear this snare just has a lot of high end presence, which again speaks to the prior concept that I covered by layering a very bright sound onto the sound that I already have. This can help it seem like it's more upfront and in your face. And the last thing that you can do when thinking about depth, this one's a bit obvious, is to just control the volume of your sound. The louder a sound is, the more that you'll perceive it to be present. So with this snare, let's say at this point I felt it was too in your face, just by merely reducing the volume of it, We now start to reduce how present and upfront it sounds and push it further back in terms of its depth. So those are five concepts that you can keep in mind when controlling the depth of your sounds in your beats. You can EQ your sounds, add reverb or delay. Think about the idea of contrast and how that's gonna help make sounds feel a little bit more upfront or further back. You can play around with saturation, distortion, and layering to reduce the depth of your sounds like I did with my chords and my drum break here. And of course, we can also control the volume in order to make something sound a little bit less loud and therefore like it's further back. And making sure you consider the depth of your sounds is gonna help you make better and more balanced and usable beats. If any of you guys watched my video on the five red flags that I see in most beats, this was one of the common mistakes I see producers make that ends up ruining a lot of good beats. So hopefully you guys have liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you want some more advanced beat making tutorials, head over to betterbeatmaker.com. That's where my full online beat making course is. Down below in the description, you can get my free drum kit if you'd like, as well as a link to the Discord if you want to join my producer community. And I will see you next time.